Vishwas. Vishwas is a uh, final year student. Is that right, Vishwas? Uh, yeah, passed out. Yeah, he's a he's a final year student, engineering student, and he's preparing for his masters to do abroad. Uh, good luck, Vishwas, for that. And uh, he is very active in the social space. Uh, he has conducted more than hundred uh, podcasts with eminent speakers in this uh, in this space, in this AI ML space. Uh, he has conducted uh, you know podcasts with uh, people from TensorFlow and most of the CEOs and uh, eminent personalities in AI ML space. And apart from that, uh, he also conducts, uh, he also organizes or uh, mediates uh, discussions for other social platforms as well, like Pi and AI uh, and a couple of other platforms. Uh, I don't remember exactly which are they, uh, but I have seen him doing that. Uh, so subscribe to his uh, YouTube channel and follow him. Uh, that's another way to uh, get to know what is happening in the industry. Uh, so that's about Vishwas and Vishwas has come up with this uh, genomic data sets. Uh, so he will give a brief about what data sets are available, uh, how we can make use of that data set uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to work on to expand our knowledge base in AI ML space. Uh, that's about Vishwas. Vishwas, you can take over. You can share the screen and then continue. And uh, yes, one note for all the participants, all the mics are on. Whenever you have questions, please unmute yourself and uh, ask the questions. Uh, we'll be glad to respond. Thanks. Yeah, Vishwas, please. Sure, I think uh, I'll. Uh, whoa, I think uh, I have shared my complete screen here. So this is my presentation. Is it visible to you yes. all? Yes. Yeah, uh, thank yes. you so much. So, yes, so I'm Vishwas Narayan. I'm currently preparing for my master's right now. So, right now, I'm also a research intern in uh, Futura Groups, Futura Business Solutions. That's what they call it. And what I basically do is basically, I love to be an very good engineer that I ever dreamed of. So that's where all these podcasts and things like that. So feel free to connect with me over the course of time. We can just have this relationship of getting the knowledge base here. And we can also learn something new every single day. If you can share anything, that's that would be great. And a quick disclaimer, don't get overwhelmed by whatever I might be saying because exactly three years before, I was over on the same way when I heard of something called as genomics. What is it all about? Because to me, I was never a complete biology student because I, in my plus two, I chose a lot of things which were kind of a uh, hazy thing, which was electronics. And now I'm more into computer science. I don't know why, but I still love them. So uh, I think probably I can share my podcast. Uh, this is my channel. You guys can subscribe to my channel. So it's just Vishwas Narayan. You can type in there. You guys can get it. And this is the playlist of the podcast, the same VNR podcast, what you are seeing, tiny.cc slash VNR podcast. It's the same link which will get redirected here. I think uh, pretty much eminent people here who are there in this space for a very long time. Of course, Ramanathan sir is here. So listen to this podcast. And they are pretty much more into DevOps and other culture. So you can get to know whatever it is. So I'm a big bibliophile. Like I love reading a lot of case studies and business problem statements. And white papers are something which I am more into right now. Because they give a lot of insights about it. And passionate about image data set. Yes, it is computer vision. So now it's all about how we leverage the genomics in the 21st century. Because 20th century was all about we finding out, hey, there is something called as a genome, which is a, which is embedded in a chemical form factor, which is a deriposed nucleic acid, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine is something which we all had. And what's the big deal with that? But that's the same old permutation combination of that chemical component is making a huge deal today. 
And genomics has to be something which is more cloud agnostic because that's what I always try to do. Because I don't care whether Azure gives me the cheapest instance, AWS or GCP has the cheapest instance. But have I architected a solution in such a way that, because I've worked on Spark workloads, I've worked on different uh, different workloads which have real-time streaming as well. But I feel that there is something which is supposed to be cloud agnostic because anything can happen over a course of time. And I have pretty much all talks on stem cells, serverless, Kubernetes, Docker. You guys can go and check out that because I'll also cover a little bit of Docker. And let me just say what I said DNA all about. So we all know that DNA is a d nucleic acid, but at the end of the day, every cell in your body has a DNA. And that's terabytes and petaflops of information that is just embedded. And probably that mutation probably might be in one instance of the same old petabytes of data. But what I'll be focusing more today is giving you a generalized approach. So what I did was there was a mechanism of action data set. What we did was we had to take it. We had to do some analysis and get you that. And the same notebooks works fine with all the different data sets which we can find on internet. And that's what we worked on. And since this is there in every cell, then every cell has a capacity to have around petabytes of a data. But I would say it's just the same old chemical combination, which is recurring over a course of time. So what we do is in the genomics, when we are doing something as a chemical based research, what we do is we take a sample, we take a chunk of the replicating data set and we see whether this replication is happening over and over again. And what we do is we just add that into the chunk and we just remove that part and we just start analyzing it. And that's what your entire genomics colloquially means. But for a computer scientist or computer vision enthusiast or somebody who's working on the data sets which are more into the JSON format, CSV files or anything, what you require is an entire data stream. So right now, that's what we focus on. So in the next five years, genomic analysis is going to be the best part of all, all of the things that we are able to get. And this is what next five years looks like. And this is what your next 25 years looks like. I don't think so. There is designers for babies and the things like that, but probably this is an hype or a hope. Let's find out exactly 25 years later because we all will be leaving. But this is an unrealistic time frame that uh, there was an uh, next five years and next 25 years in the genomics. If you can go for this time frame, you can get this article. But every time it's all about the genomic analysis, there is a genomic analysis in decision and it's the base for the precision medicine in the future. There are different models for it because I am more into the computer science aspects. I'll be talking regards to this, but I'll not be talking regards to the research which goes on. There are hundreds of scientists who can really give you a lot of insights about it. So waterfall model, there are agile models, there is DevOps and Scrum. What are all these? These are some of the methodologies which have been applied in order to get the best possible solution over a course of time. And what application architecture, what you're deploying in the packaging process, what is your application infrastructure? These decide what kind of an architecture that is built for. Even today, waterfall model is used in the bioinformatics field. You can't deny the fact that this is making a lot of impact. And to be very frank, I am more into the serverless aspect. So Docker up provides a centralized resource for the container image to be discovered. And I have uh, Docker Hub, Vishwas, Narayana, Ari, Docker Hub. This is what my Docker Hub is. This is actually a twin image that is more basically into the cybersecurity part. It's basically an embedded image which has all the things. So what you can do is Docker, Docker run minus IT twin image. If you run that, it's going to work absolutely fine. So anybody has Docker, just go on, run that, run this application. And what we do is we, we, we don't want to be in a form factor of entire compute being used. So what we do is we know that it's a file system, which is going to take a huge and a humongous toll on the hardware in the future, but why to make it even more, even more complex when we have such kind of a file system, which can be handled. So what we do is we dockerize every application. 
and you might think that docker and kubernetes might not be helpful in your research but i'll say you what uh when there is every pod probably this might look complex don't worry about it everything is still maturing over a course of time and i think probably you guys will get to know it if you don't get it please don't worry just make a quick note of whatever i am saying probably this is going to be much more useful over a course of time and what whatever it is so it's in a file format so what we do is we just take it we dump it on a system and we say docker run and it dt all these commands are pretty much the same so leave all these kind of complexities but just analyze the only with the black text the ones with the black text are some just examples that i'm giving this is the terraform this is vagrant this is github this is github actions so why i'm giving you such examples is because all of these have the same commands not all of them but they still have the same command get init gets get deploy git push has the same thing but these are the, all these are the kind of an application which can be architected over the course of time and if you see that there is a pattern in your software development so you need not have to be so unaware of the fact that all are, all the things have the same commands but just how we go with the flow and right now that's my motivation to do anything and there is a choice of languages which is truly available for me because i would say like you know there are hundreds of languages which have been used today and there are hundreds of places where we can go and architect different frameworks different packages and i think there is no barrier for any languages there is there is a huge flexibility for that and uh, why it is priced in a way it is priced it's because money is the number one factor because a lot of times when you take in hardware which is a gpu which has humongous computational power probably has 2000 crores or 3000 cores in it that's not going to make a sense because every time when you are architecting a solution you need it to be more feasible that's what i'll be talking in the future as well so what makes you intelligent is something what you do is recognize make mistakes and learn from it make sure that you learn from the learned aspects and sometimes you you have this something called as gut feeling and create a perspective as you learn and work with it and over the course of time when you see all these problem statement this is what you see it's computer vision natural language processing which deals with the perception and perspectives which deals with the insight and the intent and all these are categorized into something which is different because based on availability of the data set based on annotation of the data set this is what being architected for there are different models for classification there is a different model for uh, clustering supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning do check it so i think over the course of time when you think of something to be architected i think uh, probably you are supposed to be analyzing huge set of data sets i think uh, there is one process that i need to talk about today because in the research to production that this is what we do so data collection is the huge and a humongous part on getting what it is all about and we always try a biggest part of training but to me deployment is the biggest challenge to me because over the course of time inference and de deployment is something which we do before the assessment of the data before throwing it to the world in a form of a web website or else in a form of an application that you really want to develop but this process doesn't end because every time that you are supposed to train a model you are supposed to deploy it because there is a lot of process for conversion as well because not all devices have the same capabilities you can't throw a pb file on an tf lite format that uh, kind of a device you probably you can throw an onyx file and survive with it but onyx is pretty huge in terms of giving you that leverage for utilizing the hardware over the course of time and when you think of something like this to me every time i architect a new solution it's all about this we store the data we have a collection transform normalize the steps and we build models from the data and we deploy the models and what we do is we don't care about the data storage because nowadays it's more of an uh, 
on-stream process. You can think of Kafka clusters, which have been deployed over the course of time. You don't have to run a RabbitMQ cluster for all your queued, queued, queued data sets or anything. You do not have to have an on-premises server. You can throw the throw any amount of data to a serving layer. That that comes in a part of a Lambda architecture and Kappa architecture. Kappa is your general what you're seeing. But your Lambda is something which Kafka is very, very powerful in. And do you know what? You know, I always think, am I engineering and model building process or else am I building something which is more required for a data scientist? Because I don't know whether I can architect a solution tomorrow or today. So I feel that it's always you juggle between your roles as an ML engineer or a data scientist. And our typical development process is mainly influenced by DevOps. I think, uh, sorry if you say that, who is that? I don't know. Uh, please, because I have flow for it, right? So deployment, there's a test, there is stage. That, that is taken care by the GitHub. But what your deployment for the review to the DevOps engineer is something which we don't care about because in such kind of an hefty loads, what we have is we have such humongous fa fast queue files or, a, or else there is a PDB protein data bank files or anything. These data sets have a different amount of insight that will be given every time when you throw in to the model because it's like eight weeks which learned very vague things over a course of time. And we don't want that process to be happening. And what we do is we go to the Six Sigma uh, way of approach in order to architect a solution because what I saw in my day-to-day -day life in working with different teams and in different people which they are researching, they just go by this define, measure and analyze. And this three will be something which will be taken care of, but they don't go with the control and the improve model because they have forgotten the fact that there is something called as machine learning security aspects as well. And that is where fairness, machine learning security, and all these kind of uh, non-attackable processes. You can, you can really have a black box attack at any given point of time. Also, you can have a one pixel attack on the genomics data set. I'll say you how. Um, I think it's paint. Sorry for my typo. Let me just say there is an adenine, guanine, uh, cytosine, some sort of a thymine, something. Like there are four nuclear bases which come up and say, hey, this is what it is. So to me, and and genomic layer is something which is like one dimensional to me because that is what it is all about. So it will be an image which will be two dimensional if I take all the four points at once. And everything has their own reception and everything has their own uh, way to analyze the data. And over the course of time, what we can do is we can leverage such practices from the genomic side and we can have a chunk of it throwing out what it is all about. Like it can be something like this. And you can completely neglect what was there as in complete cycle. So this chunks of colors will define what was there. That pattern can be encoded as an as an image or else or as a text or a JSON file or else anything which has some sort of an YAML input or anything. Uh, we basically work on JSON files, so we need not have to work on it. So there is a lot of emphasis that has to be given for the control and the improvement, but what every time we do is research and development. So what's an NPR problem? So let me just Google it up for you. That's simple, NPR problem, NPR complex, there are different terms. So there is a com computational complexity at every time and uh, you can think of something like decisions which are made based on the sub categorical entities which are there present in a data set like i can say something like uh, uh, something like you can think of something like i want to cook a food 
but i only have salt and sugar what can i do with it so there is an option where you can do something called as an ors but that insight has to be given and this is where your np hard problems comes into the picture of course there is people who are using this chemical combination and salt and sugar is something which is there ors you can't survive but make sure that you deliver something this is where your np hard problems comes into the picture and there are nacra problems and there are huge ways of giving it so at the end of the day your code is the simplest entity to me i don't care whether the code is fancier written in kfe tensorflow pytorch or anything but what i do is what, can i derive an algorithm can i write subject domain knowledge do i have a good reach to getting the right parameters make sure that you know what's your data and everything and operation 1 operation 2 operation 3 operation 4 operation 5 that's your thoughts you can really merge any of it you can really think of hey let's say there is a class of benchmarks and there is a derived algorithm so let me just uh, write my own algorithm and i can use the a novel approach that means cheap <laughs> in research anything can happen so what you can think is this is what your computational layers are all about so your data lake patterns and this is a gen 1 architecture there is gen 2 architecture which still uses a lot and lot of queue storage and things like that but this is also considered to be a gen 2 because there is a blob storage here but i would say when you just have a compute layer and an analysis layer this is a gen 1 data lake which just has some sql being thrown and an authenticated user they can access blue the things but right now let's focus on what is on the table so as in the future you are architecting for the feasibility what it is all about is your fast queue files fhir apis and there's an human instance so let me just say what is an fhir api this is a standard of where your fast health interpretation resources and these are some of the apis which are built for the researchers and you can go here check this out and there are amazing data sets which are given out from uh, you need not have to think of this also you can think of going for an uh, data science virtual machine azure this is actually pretty cool because i'll say why everything is packed in it but this is pretty costly so you have you guys have to think about what is going to be happening here so this is everything included there is an anaconda package there is an onyx optimized files there is a chainer there is power bi there is sql server there is everything in it so what you can do is you can just go out there and say hey i want to build something so just give me all the resources and it has it it has everything that you need and this is what your generalized approach is all about so this is what you do as a researcher if you are in your house doing a dr project this is what you do and let's just go for some nlp based uh, problem statements that we can be analyzed and we can really build some amazing models using these and i think i'll go f11 so that you guys can see the code properly so sorry for my long code formats this is what it is all about so there is google cloud there is plotly there is sklearn.model train test split this pca principal component analysis there are log loss matrices which has been analyzed over here and if you see <laughs> there is an article which uses it so memory usage and pandas everything so if you do df.info so it gives you everything about the memory utilized everything will be given here and this is the head of the training images this is the head train it targets 11 beta hsd1 inhibitors sorry for it if this is too technical just make sure that you look back at all the slides and all the things that i have given i think probably this is going to be very useful for you so verifying the missing variables the missing values nan sum so basically what we are doing is an imputing the process and we are verifying the missing values here and what we have is this and we have some train features test feature validation feature and we are doing an in space value 
And this is an analysis which says, hey, this amount of patches based on one, one, one kind of a data set, this is from the other kind of a data set, and what next? And you know, when you think of this kind of an analysis where there is 24, 48, and 72 CP times or else instances which cover up, okay, this is what it is all about, then what? These are the visualizations which help you. And if you go here, these are the categorical values that I've taken. These are the histogram which says, hey, this is the concentration of it. These are the solid histograms. So, in, in your so this is a box plot which says that a standard C variables and G variables. I didn't even go on cytos and timing. That's not the one, but this is the one which I was thinking of. Because G and the C are the variables which are just being analyzed for your drug. And these are simple plots which still says the same but i would love to show you this plot because it's an it's an archit plot which says hey this is the concentration of it and this is what you wanted to see and this is the confusion matrix for all the different cases and all the different drugs and everything so you guys can think of how much is the influence of every analysis that is being made there so you can throw in a different data set, it will start working. And this is a PCA analysis and there is a variance between a lot of values and what it does is, okay, let's just drop in some kind of an analysis which is very close to what can be seen and variances of 45 to 10 has been taken into consideration. And if you think of some more plots, there are antibiotics, activators and other analgesic and there are sterilizers and other drugs which are there. So mechanism of action has analyzed it very close to 100 plus, 100 plus of the samples that can be given. But this is what analysis was all about. And if you think of something like this, this is a complex confusion matrix. I am thinking of some matrices which think of like, so kit indicate inhibitors, there are fit three inhibitors, there are stimulants which are being used things like that so don't worry just make sure that you take a screenshot of this and you guys can think of what it is all about so if you guys have any doubts so do reach out to me and i'll be able to help you if i can and that's it folks from my side and thank you so much for your valuable time i think that's it from my side folks so vishwas yeah uh, where do you take this data from? It's from the can Kaggle. It's uh, always you... there. Kaggle MOA data set, which is always there. Can you share that screen, that uh, collab screen, if you can? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. That was very quick. So I have some basic questions. Yeah, yeah sure, sir, sure. I think you're yes, able to see my... Oh, yeah. Not yet. You're... Yeah, I think now, yes. Yes, uh, if we can give a uh, go slow from the first uh, where you get the data, let's. Ah, that is from the Kaggle. This is here. Mechanism of action. This is all there as an co. And then everything. This is the data set. The same old data set that I got from here. So I got it on the drive. Is, there yeah. is no API to get the data directly into Collab from Kaggle. There is there is an API for it. You can uh, go for this, uh, but this was a done competition. You can okay. really do this, but uh, since this was already out of the reach and there was no competition which you can join, but this is an already older one. So what I thought was like, let's not uh, waste any more time since I have okay. the zip file, which okay. was already there. So okay. I, I just imported it through the zip, unzip minus UQ. It still does the same work. And I had the same old uh, content and train test. The okay. same same values came in. Little slow, little slow. Uh, uh, let because people that absorb what you have done. So what is is, is there a target variable at all in this analysis? Or yeah, wait, wait, wait. The... I'll show you, sir. I'll show you, sir. This was basically an analysis, but in the PCA you can see all the things. PCA code. This is all visualizations. 
these are all visualizations which says hey this is the concentration of some variable which we are considering okay uh, what is the target variable in this case what are we trying to predict so uh, so this is basically an accuracy and the mean count of how much is the dosage and how much is the value that can be analyzed so wh what is it going to happen so mechanism of action is basically how the data can react on to your body right and that's what it is all about and uh, based on some of the uh, data sets which have been taken wait i'll show you in the pca part there are categories of uh, values which can say hey this is how much we are going to be affected from this and that and basically the effect of the uh, drug over a body and this is what it is all about so zero and the one is basically the, the classification which happens here what are we classifying zero and one what do they mean Does that have so it's uh, it's more of a spurious one less of a spurious one and uh, these are the variables which always come which is like some of the chemical combinations or else some of the diseases which they can be curing and these are some of the actions which they can be taken like there are some okay there are some inhibitors what are they there are some uh, analgesics what are they and these are the variables which say the zero is something which is like a lot of an less side effective but one is kind of a more side effective here uh, what do you see in the columns is all about genomes or drugs and these are the drugs what you can see all about when uh, the genomes are where are the genomes i missed the these genomes. are not the genomes i told you right this is not the genome set this is basically saying how much is the action of this data set over there so genomic analysis can be done but what i was trying to describe here is how much can be the effect of the drug and how much can be the analysis in the future that's what i said in the beginning okay this data set is all about uh, drugs not nothing about the genome uh, this is all about the behavior on, on your body so it makes sense be before you go for the genomic analysis as well okay before the genomic analysis yeah like if if i can share you another stem cell thing we i'll share you the stem cell i think the notebook is there inside that but i'll see whether the stem cell has that notebook in the speaker's note or something mm -hmm. so even in the stem cell research when uh, i can say there are something called as teratomas i think uh, stem cells pros and cons and other techniques let me just see whether this comes up but uh, the, these are some of the uh, case studies that i wanted to say before because these are some analysis that they do before all the genomic uh, research that they go on like probably if i can say something like somebody has a psychological disease but they claim that even my mom had the same disease that can't be done right so okay. this was like the pre pre process of all the genomics and things like that okay i think okay. this is the stem cell talk that i did but i don't know where it is but this has a good set of ted talks and a good set of examples like i can say okay let's see an example of stephen hawking like something like do you know how stephen hawking used to give commands to the chair which he was sitting all throughout his life it's through his eyes and that stem cell was not affecting even though he had an he had this kind of a disease als hmm. how because that's how they turn back to all the precision medicine analysis so this is a part of a precision medicine process which uses the behavior of a drug which is prior to the genomic analysis okay okay this is about the drug and the effect it has on your body yeah. and uh, you have done a exploratory analysis basically you have uh, figured out what yeah. is the uh, principal components and the visualizations is what you have I done i think i can't share this i think i can chat it but like i think i can do a tiny dot cc for this don't worry for that yeah that's what it is all about sir it's uh, not about uh, going too complex on the genomics because it's hefty like mm -hmm. i have a data set which is like 15 gigs which mm -hmm. is an data set of a garlic okay and 
analyzing it in the real time probably it's not a right idea because even that that is that data can be put in because that's the same old test train validate what we have it's from the different samples that we took and simple simple analysis it still remains the same i think uh, stem cell slide one i think i'll do this i think i have pros and cons i think that's the best thing that can be happening so stem cell slide one okay. go check this out so stem cell slide two is also saying about the same principle that i'm talking here but in a different form factor like it's saying uh, how research has has been misunderstood so there are a lot of perspectives for the same problem statement but mm. there is different uh, analogy which can be given okay okay so uh, i understand the data set is all about healthcare data set and uh, uh, the code is ready available for uh, visualizations basically exploratory data analysis in yeah it's, uh, it's ready and we yeah yeah okay um that is good uh, uh people if you have any questions uh, please unmute your mic and shoot it for vishwas sure you can do that ashmi uh, even the sliders that's no problem because i think this is these are some of the i think this was actually for the amber speaking that's actually a playlist i think uh, you guys can check out these two links stem cell slide 1 stem cell slide 2 and this will be working now okay this is the uh, pros and the cons oh. of the yeah this link is still these two links i can share it on the this one that's the problem that's so that's fine. why i did uh, you can share it to me separately i will put it uh, these are the link to the collab uh... yeah uh, uh, this is the link for the slides okay this is the link for the collab okay uh, can you do a tiny url i will pick it up from there sure sure i can do that sure oh sure think collab move a hi this is arvind here yeah so my question is uh, more as a lay person plus probably a little bit of developer so sure. i want to understand the state of the art in genomics today at least in india suppose i want to get my genomic data my personal genomic data hmm what is the current cost uh, to get it done where can it be done and after having obtained my genomic data hmm. what kind of analysis can i do as a developer so the first part of the question is as, as a lay person hmm. the second part of the question is as a developer what can i do with that genomic data that is my own personal data yeah i can say you like uh, when you have your own data set that is basically probably some gigabytes of data set which says probably about a cell and its behavior so there are genomics institutions which are pretty good amazing and you can probably have a stem cell research lab and you can go there and you can have a genomic analysis done or else there are some genomic consultants in india which is not as good as what is there in us because genomic consultancy is not that great in india to be very frank but if you can go for genomic institutions which are thoroughly doing research on genomics that's that's the place where you can get your genome analyzed and probably you can think of something like uh, genetic engineering uh, institutions and also stem cell engineering institutions that's going to be pretty awesome if you can get that but that's the they, these are the places where you can afford to get it i think probably there was a time where we had uh, the, the data set which used to cost like 1 terabytes which used to cost like around uh, 7000 dollars but now it's uh, now it's comprised with a lot of other parameters as well which is costing much more lesser which is around like 1000 dollars and sometimes even lesser than that even like if you go for 5 gig or something probably it's going to cost you around 200 dollars or something sir 
and if you if you can afford to get your own data set probably you can think of building a model which can predict whether you will be prone to get cancer or not it can be something which is more genetic or else which can be also something like because i am 95 kilos 5 foot 11 and uh, i am more prone to blood pressure in the future but i don't have one because i make sure that i stay healthy by at least doing some times of work but these are the patterns which can also be analyzed plus your genomic data which has been taken and can be analyzed for whether you are prone to more of the cancer and if you think of some case studies this is from the azure azure is doing pretty amazing in terms of their data science and their other models and if you think of aws aws is doing good in terms of ai ops and the genomics because that's where their platform is moving more towards and this is a bayer score science case study and this is actually pretty amazing if you guys can read that it's going to be awesome so just go here start checking about what is it happening here and pretty much it's the, still the same so that's it so you i think there is no much of an effort that can be put in apart from getting a data set because that's the riskiest job that anybody can do if you have it you can analyze it and you can write some papers and things like that okay can you please share the tiny url that uh, for the code collab code collab, yeah yeah okay this is for the collab uh, moa it's tiny.cc collab.moa collab moa collab moa collab moa tiny.cc/collab.moa and wait i think i didn't share the slide for that <coughs> it's for the genomics data insert this is the slide i didn't do view also i think yeah i think I'll, i should do a tiny url for this uh this is for slides yeah not genomic slides okay this is the one for the slides these two are for the uh, stem cells this is for the collab and this is for the genomics thing I think that's it, folks, from my side. I think any questions, please do drop it to me. Can you go back to the genomic slides? I missed to note it. VNR genomic slides. Uh, oh, one second, one second. Uh, wait, I need to share it. I am. Oh, sorry. Let's select that. It's here, sir. VNR genomics slides. Okay, I missed out on it. Yes, thanks. That's good. Sure. Yes, I think that's it from my side. I think any questions and queries, anything is fine. Sure, audience. Any queries? We have Vishwas here. Ah, uh, if there are no queries, ah, uh, thanks, Vishwas. Ah, uh, we will go through the code and. Uh, uh we can reach out if we have any questions sure. and 